Hello friend, this is Ryan Hicks of TalkToProfit.com and today I want to talk to you about how to discover the power of God within you to manifest your desires efficiently. Many people talk about the power of God, but it's it's in this context of just spiritual things. Like they just think, well, maybe it's a couple gifts of the Spirit. Some people don't even believe in that. They're so devoid of the Spirit of God, they don't even believe in the gifts of the Spirit anymore. But others will think, well... Like the power of God comes upon them and they shout hallelujah or something and get emotional and that's somehow the power of God. The power of God is given to you by the Spirit of God indwelling you if you're born again. If you know Jesus, you're walking with him. But God is not giving you that power by his Spirit for you just to be mediocre, for you just to be like everyone else, for you just to be a normie. No, you are supposed to be a person who excels in life by the grace and power of God within you. Now, anytime I mention this, there's people that come on and they they got their little doctrines, their little creeds. They'll babble about, well, you're talking about New Age. They love that term because it is a blanket term they can use to dismiss anything without any evidence, without any actual scriptural proof. They don't care about that. They just want to dismiss it and demonize it because... They're weak and ineffective in this life. And they know it. They know they're powerless. They know they're not walking in the, the Spirit of God and His grace. They know they're not being led by the Spirit of God. And so they want to shun anything that would remotely get you closer to being dependent and in tune with the Spirit of grace. But the power of God, as Jesus said, that the kingdom of God is within you. Does that sound like you're a powerless person? And understand, this is all in the context of God being the one that gives you the grace, being the one that gives you the power. It's all Him. So it's not about you and you're somehow being better than somebody else or anything like that. It is about God. And He gives you this power. But He doesn't give you this power just to do a few things that seem spiritual to certain people. Those things are part of it. But he gives you his power to use to have the best life possible. To have a life and live a life that is glorious to him. That shows forth his abundance and his grace and his mercy and his favor overflowing in all areas of your life. Now you may say, well, but God doesn't give us his power. We can't just command his power like we're commanding God. Well, what did God actually say about this? Does anyone care about that? They just want to whine about something being New Age or whatever nonsense they want to lie about? Or do they want to actually believe what God said in the Scripture? Because in Isaiah chapter 45, verse 11, it says this, Listen to the words. Thus saith the Lord, the Holy One of Israel and His Maker, Ask me of things to come concerning my sons, and concerning the work of my hands, command ye me. What is more plain than commanding the very work of God's hands? How would you do that? You're not bossing God around. But you have been granted by His grace the power of God to work within you. Remember Philippians chapter 2 verse 13 says, For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of His good pleasure. How? By the power of God He's given you. That power to act, to do, and beyond just the physical activities we can do, to speak forth life, to believe and to receive that which we have prayed for will come to pass and has come to pass. We've already received it when we prayed. That we speak forth boldly and decree those things and yes, even command the work of God's very hands by the power of God within us. This is not us having any control over God. This is God granting us by his grace as children to have this ability within us. If you want to manifest the best life, you need to line up with what God would want you to do. To both will and to do of his good pleasure. Which is what? It's you having an abundant life. It's you being the best blessing you could possibly be. It's you being righteous. It's you walking in righteousness. Because sometimes you talk about righteousness and people think, well, it's just this positional righteousness, but you're living like a filthy sinner. No. 
an actual new birth where you become an actual new creature in Christ. The old has passed away. If the old is still there, then there's no new creature. You're not in Christ. The very scripture says in Galatians chapter 5, verse 24, that they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. You have that power of God working within you right here and now to use for all areas of your life. Getting rid of the sin issue, getting rid of sickness, getting rid of poverty, getting rid of lack, getting rid of stupidity and lacking wisdom and making foolish decisions. God's grace covers it all. And it, you can enact the best and most glorious life and manifest it right here and now if you only believe and start acting on the goodness and grace of God within you. What are some plain ways you do this? Well, you stop working against yourself, firstly. You stop speaking negatively. You stop talking negatively. That means, and this is very important, because people will hear this and they think, well, it's just that positive thinking. But they fail to understand that they go around talking about stuff they don't even want all the time and then they wonder why their life is filled with things they don't want. Their life is filled with drama, is discord, sickness, problems here and there. All kinds of issues that they don't want. And they behave as if they are powerless. They behave as if they are victims of life. And not as the scripture says, that it's from our hearts flow the issues of life. We need to take accountability for our lives. Stop blaming the devil. You can blame the devil for whatever you want. Or you can do, as it says in Jude, and just say, the Lord rebuke thee. And just be that person who is submitted to God and resists the devil, and the devil flees from them. He has no part or lot in your life because you are so in tune with God. You're walking in righteousness. You're speaking forth the words of life. You're not speaking forth the devil's word. How can you resist the devil how can you have the devil flee from you if you're constantly speaking his word over your life well you know that bad thing happened over there we well, you know this always happens to me well you know that this bad thing happened you start retelling as if you're glorying in satan's results in your life stop speaking that stuff start speaking things that are edifying start thinking importantly about only those things that are lovely and of good report as philippians chapter 4 verse 8 says, and I constantly emphasize that passage of scripture, because if you will do that, your thought life becomes different. Your mind becomes renewed. Remember Romans chapter 12, verse two, it says, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove that which is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. If you have that renewed mind, that's not thinking negatively. It's not thinking about the world. It's not thinking about the devil. It's not whining and complaining and focusing on all the things it doesn't want, but that mind is thinking about the goodness and grace of God and your mind's renewed. You prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God, which is all the blessings, the healing, the righteousness, the peace, the joy in the Holy Ghost overflowing in your life. And you can have that if you'll believe. And if you'll start acting like a person who believes by thinking about God and stop thinking about the devil, by thinking about God's goodness and stop thinking about negativity of the world, by thinking about God's grace and stop thinking about the things you don't want in your life. And when you start speaking forth from that position of a thought life that is based and rooted and grounded in the goodness and grace of God, that power of God within you just flows out and starts to bring to you all the things required for you to manifest that life of all those good desires you have that God's put in your heart because he gives you the desires of your heart, both puts them in your heart in the first place. He gives you the, the desire to have. And then he actually gives you the desire once you align with his perfect will. Because God's that good God who wants to give you liberally and abundantly and freely all good things. My friend, the power of God is within you to manifest the life you want. Are you going to command it by speaking forth those good, blessed, lovely virtuous things that is a product of your good thought life are you going to 
continue to speak forth the negativity of the world, speak forth the things you don't want, and get that life that is not what you want. My friend, I pray that you choose the best. You choose life and blessing and stop choosing death and cursing. Speak forth life and blessing over your life, over the life of other people. And watch as you start to manifest your desires efficiently and effectively forevermore. My friend, I pray this is a blessing for you. May God bless you richly.